is 5.51 on a Sunday morning and I'm already ready to flip my lid. Like, what? You know you're long-winded when you can't even get through a what's old video on your computer battery life. We may just need to like wing this at this point. Clearly that makes the computer mad and then he doesn't like me and he shuts off. I need a tissue. Oh my God, now I gotta sign into Google. I have a major issue with technology. Like I just wish it would work like I don't want to know the why or I want to know the how I don't want to like know all your problems of why you're not working I just want you to work like... <laughs> so there's that it's a lot of retakes today okay what's up everyone my name is Rebecca and you are watching Rebecca the reseller thanks for joining me today for a Memorial Day edition of what sold. So today is Sunday, tomorrow is Memorial Day, and I know that there are a lot of military families and military moms that are resellers that happen to watch my show from before when I was the reseller mom show. My husband served in the 82nd Airborne Division for five years and did two tours in Iraq and unfortunately has lost some fellow service members. So for those that currently serve, for those that support those that serve, for those that have served, thank you so much for your service. And for those that have lost someone um, due to military service, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, for those of us that do plan to enjoy the Memorial Day weekend in some way, given everything that has happened over the last few months, I hope that you at least have some quality family time and get the opportunity to enjoy what you can while you can. And I hope that that brings everyone a little bit of happiness for this weekend on a somber occasion. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the video. I have, I hope, a great video for you, despite the fact that my sales number is not as high as it was last week. So let's jump into it. We're gonna go over the stats, the top sellers, the fast sellers, the boutique report, and of course, the awards for this week. So with some opening notes, I do wanna point out that I have been experimenting with a number and that is listing 17 items per day. Now I've been hearing this number kind of floated around from different resellers on YouTube. And so I don't really know if there's truth to this or if there isn't truth to this or whatever, but I figured I would jump on the bandwagon and give it a try. So I have heard that 17, listing 17 items a day is like an algorithm booster in Poshmark. And so that helps trigger the algorithm in some way and will help you get more sales. I don't know yet that that is the case. It does obviously take some time for things to, I don't know, work and shake out and marinate. I have no idea. Like I'm not a tech person. <laughs> I experiment with a lot of things. I try them out. I see what works. Um, and you know, listing more, I guess can always help, but I do want to kind of point out some caveats with this. So I'm not listing 17 new items per day. And perhaps that is a reason why this may not be giving it the, you know, crazy boost that perhaps could come from it. So what I'm doing, the breakdown is I'm listing five new items on Poshmark of thrifted clothing items. I'm listing two new items of boutique items, so multiple quantity boutique items, and we can talk about that later. And then I'm relisting 10 items. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I do want to move old inventory, and I'm also balancing having better Poshmark sales with increasing my thread up inventory. So right now I'm basically diverting new inventory into two ways. Some is going to thread up, some is going to Poshmark. Now the items that are going to Poshmark are going to have a more immediate effect because I'm listing it right away. It's going up. It has the potential to sell right away. But the thread up inventory is getting sent off. I'm waiting for a Lux label. It's in transit. It takes time to be received. It takes time to be processed. And then things may or may not sell. And they're tied up for between 60 and 90 days plus. So I'm still at the beginning of that thread up process and window. And so I haven't had anything fully cycle through yet where I'm reclaiming it back when it hasn't sold and deciding to send it in or not again. So there's a lot of things that are in flux right now. And so I'm basically balancing two platforms and it's not like Poshmark and eBay where it's the same inventory. It's completely different inventory. So it's all moving me towards my goals of four ways to 4K per month. And if you don't know about that, it's kind of like a new mantra, a new goal that I'm executing and working towards. And I have a whole video kind of announcing it and letting you know what's about it. I do plan on doing an update video in June about how that effort is going. I'm really happy with it. So check out that video if you want to know what's going on with that. But just know that because I am working towards this four ways to 4K, I have a few things going on that are a little bit different than your typical Poshmark strategy. 
So I'll leave that there. Um, but just know I am trying to do 17 listings a day. Five are new thrifted items, two are new boutique items, and 10 are relists. The other note that I wanted to make is that I had a lot of oldies but goodies sell this week and don't count those items out. Um, you know, a third of the items that I sold this week were four months or older as far as being listed. And so some of them I am doing a sale and we'll talk about that in a second, but a lot of them did sell for normal price or normal offers. And so relisting does help now that Poshmark has the new copy feature. This is completely a breeze. Don't need any outside help to do it. You can easily do it from your phone. I did that one day and then I've also done it from the computer. It's just awesome. And I really think it was a great addition by Poshmark. And if you're not using it, you need to put it into your workflow and figure out at what point do you want to relist items? Is it when they're four months old? Is it when they're six months old? Is it when they're a year old? Whatever pattern or format you want to set up, start to include it into your daily routine, weekly routine, however you want to do it. Because I do think that having it be a fresh listing and then using that as an opportunity to make any revisions to it is fantastic. Um, just a little commercial. If you don't know, I do offer channel memberships and I received a tip from a member this month that I thought was great. And basically we were talking about relisting and the 17 items a day strategy that I have right now. And she mentioned that she's been selling an amazing amount of inventory with relisting. And she said that the key to it is to change the cover photo. Now for me, I only ever take one cover photo shot. So I don't know, I have to ask her more about what is it exactly that she's doing with the cover photo to change it. Is she taking a new one? Is she using a different photo and switching it out? Is she doing some kind of format thing where maybe you're taking the photo that you had, but adding the brand name on the side or putting a border around it or doing something graphically to make it look different? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I wanted to thank her very much for submitting that suggestion and saying that, you know, it's a great idea. It's a good idea to relist your items. But if you're going to relist it, go ahead and make at least one change. And probably one of the easiest changes you can make is to switch out the cover photo or make some change to the cover photo. That way it looks completely fresh and different in the eyes of the potential buyers. So again, thank you, Heather, for suggesting that. Um, that's a great tip and I appreciate it. And for those, again, that are not familiar with the fact that I have memberships on this channel, I have two different levels. You can find them um, in the description of this video. I have a link and it's just basically a way to support the channel, support me in kind of an effort to continue to make these videos and make all of the content free. Um, membership offers some additional perks that you get when you do support the channel with a membership. And I've put together um, a couple of levels, a couple of really cool, exciting perks, and I would encourage you to check it out if it's something you might be interested in. We have a great little group of members. We do posts, we have discussions, we have a member live once a month. Um, I provide discounts to my Etsy shop and so that has all of my reseller tools and resources in there and so far it's been really great discussions and I've appreciated the members that have signed up. We have a good little group and if you'd like to join I would love that. So the last note that I'll make on opening notes is I did run a five for 25 bundle sale this week. I had three bundles sell, which was great because that helped me get rid of 15 items that I don't want in my store anymore. Um, you know, it only brought me in $75 in gross sales. I'm not really losing money on these items. Most of them were from the bins. And so, you know, my buy cost on the bins items specifically is very, very low. So I'm clearing out a lot of the men's items. Some, I do have some men's items left, some women, women's items and some kids items. Everything has the magnolia flower. I'm making up that it's magnolia. I don't really know that it's a magnolia. I don't know that. Um, but there's still some stuff there if anybody wants to check it out. And so that's, so I had three bundles on that, which was great. And so I always encourage you, if you're looking to get rid of something, come up with an exciting sale that you can post around. And no, I don't know if I've mentioned it on this. I mentioned it in my previous closet reviews, which I'm having so much fun doing. I've just gotten two recently, so I'm very excited. Facebook group where you can post your sale. I'm trying to promote it on Poshmark. I'm promoting it here. I want it to be a place where buyers and sellers can come together to find out about sales or post sales and deals on Poshmark. So if you're running a sale, you can take that listing and copy the link and put it in the Facebook group. If you're a buyer, you can go there and check out what sales are running and go to those closets and buy. So I will put that link down below. Hope you'll check that out. It's small now, but I'd like to see it get bigger over time. And that way people know that you can always go there to post your deal or find a deal. Okay, so let's jump in to the numbers finally. So I've got 769 items active at this time. It's kind of fluctuating in the high 700s, the low 800s. I'm selling well, which is great. I'm not adding as many as I was. So I'm hoping that at some point I can do some listing sprees here and there and add in chunks of items to really get my active listings up. I would like to see a thousand active listings on Poshmark soonish. We'll see. I don't have a deadline on that. Again, I am building up my thread up inventory as well. And I would really like to see what kind of numbers come 
sales wise from a thousand active listings on Poshmark. It's been a little while since I've been at that number and then a thousand active listings on ThreadUp and see what my income looks at looks like at that level. So I'm trying to get to those numbers as quickly as I can so that we'll see what happens there. So as far as total number of sales, you saw it on the thumbnail, $883, nothing to sneeze at, a good solid week, not where I want it to be, um, but that's fine. I had a lot of low dollar sales and trying to clearance out some inventory. I feel like I'm always saying that, but it is what it is. So I had 64 items sell and I realized that in the last couple of videos, sometimes I was tracking number of items and sometimes I was tracking number of sales. So I think at this point, just to keep things simple and know an average item cost to know, or an average item sales price to know how many items are selling, I'm just going to stick with items. I think that is an easier number to deal with. So $883, 64 items sold, $14 average sale price, not great at all, but due to the bundle sale and the amount of bundle sales I had, they kind of brought everything down. Um, again, for the five, to, five for 25 bundle. So at this time, I would love it if you guys would share with me from time to time how your sales are going. It's really nice to know what kind of people are watching as far as, are you new? Are you a seasoned seller? Have you been doing this a while? Are you a part-time seller, a full-time seller? Are you selling thousands of dollars a week? Are you hoping just to get daily sales? Like, let me know what your situation is in the comments below. Say hi, introduce yourself. I read and respond to them all. And it just kind of helps give me some perspective and context to who I'm talking to every week. I know it changes and there's new people all the time, um, but it is nice to hear from you when you can. So if you don't mind, go ahead and leave me a comment below, say hi, and let me know how your sales have been doing. Now let's jump into the um, average and high and low. So the number of sales on average, and this is number of items sold on average this week per day was nine. Nine items per day are selling. I think that's great. It used to be higher. I've had lower. I'd like it to be in the 15 to 20 range. So obviously if I'm only listing five new items, two boutique items, relisting some items, it would be difficult for me to have that higher sell through rate on a daily basis. But I feel like as I do these listing sprees and add more items in, perhaps my average can increase a little bit. I know it's not about the number of items that you sell per day, it's about the dollar value and the profit that you're bringing in. But for me, it's just nice to know that on average, a certain consistent amount is happening. I don't know. It's like a mental thing. It makes me feel better. So nine items selling on average per day, $126 on average in gross revenue. That's all fine. Again, it could be more, but I'm fine with it. It's over a hundred a day. So that's fine with me. Um, on the number of sales, the lowest day I had was two sales. The highest day I had was 24 sales. So again, runs the gamut. Um, as far as dollar amount, the lowest day was $34 in sales and the highest day was $319 in sales. So it's just a roller coaster. I'm getting more and more used to it now that I'm looking at these numbers and seeing them week in and week out that my week was okay. It ended up with this, even though I had the day that was like this and the day that was like this. So I think it's nice to know your numbers and it just kind of helps give you a little bit of perspective in the data, knowing that that is real and what you feel on any given day isn't necessarily real. And I'm a very emotional person. <laughs> My emotions fly like crazy, especially, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you've had no offers or you wake up in the morning and you've had no sales, it totally ruins my morning, but I let that happen. And if I can keep knowing my numbers and knowing that I could still have an amazing day, even if I don't wake up to a sale, I think that will help get my emotions in check about it and not make it so like ah, crazy. I'll probably still be crazy anyway. So before I jump into the top items that sold and all the fast items that sold, go ahead and give this uh, video a thumbs up for me. I would really appreciate it. It really does help. And I love it when you do. So top selling items for the week. We have five things to go over. First up is this um, black goddess wrap cover up maxi. And so this is a beach cover up, a swim cover up, bathing suit cover up, whatever you call it. And I have had this as a boutique item in my closet for a while, at least over a year at this point. And it, yeah, it looks like it's been listed for 502 days. So over a year, I've had multiple quantities. I've done restocks on it, it has sold well. Sometimes it sells on offers. Sometimes it sells at full price. This one sold at full price for $29. And that was my last one. I haven't decided if I'm going to restock it yet. I felt like I had a really good run with it. And then it kind of tapered off again. Obviously it is a seasonal item, but I just haven't decided if I'm going to restock it or not. I may, I may not. I don't know yet. We'll see. There are going to be a lot of changes with my boutique items. And so some things I'm 
you know, trying to fire sale some things, I'm deciding, okay, these are the types of items I want to continue to have on a regular basis. So it's just a matter of how much do I want to invest up front um, and if I want to continue to carry that SKU. So stay tuned for that. Uh, next up is this Henry Bendel, Bendel cashmere sweater, really pretty green color. Um, and I realized I spelled sweater wrong, swatter, excellent. Um, <laughs> But you know, I love selling at cashmere. It's May, it's the middle of May, it's Memorial Day weekend, and I'm still selling cashmere sweaters. So it just goes to show they can sell at any time, list your cashmere, list your sweaters, just do it, you never know. So that sweater sold for $35 after 35 days of being listed. Interesting, 35, 35. Next up is this Eileen Fisher goat suede skirt. This has been up for a little while. It sold for $35 on an offer, um, a little bit lower than I'd like, but I have had it for 69 days and we are getting into the warmer weather. So I thought suede skirt, I don't know how long. Um, so $35 is fine. 69 days to sell is fine. You know, nothing too crazy there. Next up is this Madewell silk forest floor dress size zero. This sold for $35 and it took 40 days to sell. Next up is this, oh, um, these Sam Edelman sandals and they are called the Audria Leopard Crisscross Sandal. These were, I guess you can call it retail arbitrage, but maybe it's not, I don't even know, they're new. <laughs> they're new, but I got them at the buy sell trade store. So I guess maybe that's thrifting. I don't know, is that retail or is that thrifting? So they're worth $199. I honestly don't remember what I paid for them maybe $9, 9 or $10, something like that. Cause I can't imagine that I would ever pay more than nine or $10 for any shoe. I really don't like shoes, but there was a period where I thought, gosh, maybe I should do more shoes because every time I do have shoes, it goes well. It doesn't always go well. I guess I should say the ones that go well sell for a great amount of money. I make a really great return and it works out well. And then the ones where I just buy cause I want shoes, but they're not the right shoes. Those don't go well which is why I don't do a lot of shoes because I don't really know a lot about shoes. But I thought these were pretty good because they were new. They were Sam Adelman, um, which, you know, I think is okay. And um, they were $199 retail value. And like I said, I only paid like nine or $10 for them. And I sold them for 43. These did take a little while to sell and they were relisted at least once. Um, but I thought that was fine. So that was my highest sale this week was the $43 Sam Edelman sandal sale. So fastest selling items for this week. Um, a couple weird things with it. I will kind of go through it as best as I can, but I have these Calvin Klein vintage denim shorts, light wash. These were from the bins a while ago and it just took me a while to list them. They sold in 18 days of being listed for $18. And you know, men's item, vintage item, it just, I bought it because I thought it might be a thing, but when they didn't like fly off the shelf for a million dollars, I was like, oh, I don't even want these in my closet anymore. I guess I get excited about maybe I found a really cool vintage thing that somebody's really going to want, want to buy quickly, and we'll pay a bunch of money for it. And then when that doesn't happen, I'm just kind of like, well, now it's just an old pair of denim shorts in my closet and they're men's, which I don't want these here. So they sold for $18. They were on my five for 25 bundle sale, but no one bought them for five for 25. They bought them for 18. Fine with me. Next up is the um, Boho Festival White Pink Daisy Earrings. So these have actually been selling pretty well. I've been slowly adding boutique jewelry items into the mix. I'm going to share more about my boutique and what I'm doing with it and kind of what my plans are with it, probably in my four ways to 4k update video. I just don't think it's time here to like go into all of that. So this is kind of part of that. This particular item has sold already a couple of times. I have restocked it. It's on its way. So I'll have more coming in, which is great. I love that because the work is already done. So all I have to do is just up my quantity, which is awesome. Now these only sold for $10, but I will tell you the jewelry items are very inexpensive. And so I'm still making a profit because it's a multiple quantity item. I'm still making multiple profits. And so it all works out for me. Um, so I actually sold a few of those, which is why I'm only going to tell you about three fast selling items because I had a bunch of boutique jewelry that sold a couple of times and they were all fast selling because they're all newly listed. So that is the boutique item. I guess you could say that was fast selling, but the fastest selling item that I'm very excited about is this ASOS tropical wrap dress. What? If you have been watching, you know that I had like a crazy ASOS week a few weeks ago and little by little, these random ASOS pieces are selling. And I felt like before months ago, a year ago, whatever, like ASOS never really did that well. And now all of a sudden it's like a bonanza of ASOS sales. <laughs> and I'm going to keep picking it up. And what's even crazier is that they're all size 14. 
14 ASOS is the thing. I don't know why. I have no idea, but I'm just going to ride the wave and I'm going to keep putting it in my closet. And what's funny about this one is it's a really pretty dress. I actually sent it in to thread up before I knew that this ASOS size 14 thing was a thing. I got a bunch of ASOS in. I sent some to thread up, longer ones that I didn't want to deal with. And then I kept some for myself to list. And then the ones that I listed myself went so well, I was so mad that I sent these other ones in to thread up. One sold on ThreadUp, one or two are still at ThreadUp unsold. And then this one wasn't accepted, it got sent back to me. So instead of sending it back to ThreadUp in the next box, I kept it, listed on Poshmark and bingo, it sold in how many days did I say? Two days, two days of being listed, which is fantastic. Let's get into the boutique report. Again, I'm not gonna go into everything that's going on and changing in anew with my boutique, but just know I used to have a lot of, not no, I used to have some boutique items. Now I'm starting to add more in different categories. And this is all moving me toward my plan of the four ways to 4K. So again, if that's new to you, go check out that video down below so you'll know what's going on. But I've sold 18 boutique items in one week, which is fantastic. And for a total of $217. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but what I'm doing is fire sailing the bad SKUs, staying consistent with the good SKUs, and then adding newer items and they are of a lower price point. They're mostly jewelry items and they are at a lower price point and that's okay. The main goal with Boutique is that it's a multiple quantity, it's profit multiple times again. So for me, that's fine. So 18 items, $217, I will take it. Now, before I get to the awards, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm giving you all kinds of reselling content to make more money on Poshmark, increase your sales, different things going on with Thread Up, what's all videos like this one. I'm working on my four ways to 4K. I've got multiple income streams, just all kinds of cool stuff and plans for this channel. So I hope you will subscribe if you have not already so that you can find out everything that's going on and hang out with me again. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much for coming back week after week. I really do appreciate it. Leave me a comment, say hi. So for the awards, the Slowpoke Award this week is going to an item that was listed for 240 days. And honestly, since giving out the Slowpoke Award, um, and this is an item that has taken a long time to sell, the, the longest item um, that has taken to sell that week, um, this is actually pretty low. Some of the other ones have been listed for way longer, I feel. So anyway, it's a Brooks Brothers wool dress pants. They're men's. I'm done with men's. I'm over you. I've had it. I'm finished. This sold in a bundle on my five for 25 sale. I don't care. I don't care that it's Brooks Brothers and I could have gotten whatever for it. I don't care that I don't care. It's gone from my life. It's sold. I still made profit on it. I'm finished with you. Goodbye. So 240 days to sell. It sold for $5 in a bundle. Whatever. The want, want, want award. So this award typically goes to the lowest sale based on dollar amount. Because I was running the five for 25 bundle sale, as you can imagine, I had three bundle sales for the five for 25. Plus I had some other bundles and I sold some other items lower because I'm fire sailing some boutique items. Basically I'm a girl in transition over here. And so it's like, I'm at the point where if it works, it works great. Let's keep doing that. If it's not working, let's pivot and get rid of those items and move on. I'm not a long tail seller for most things. I want it to either work or not work and let's move on. So these um, bundle sales are fine. Like I'm fine to have literally 15 plus items go at $5 an item because they're gone and I don't have to deal with it anymore. And now I can focus that money and my time and my effort and my sharing and all of my energy on different other items that are going to work out better. So the Want 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 Award goes to all of the items that sold on my five for 25 sale this week. And if you wanna check out, I do have some men's items still. I have some kids items and I have some women's items still. And I might even go back through the closet again sometime this week and add some more, I'm not sure. So just stay tuned for that. Um, you know, check my closet for that listing. See if you see any with that pink flower, you're more than welcome. I would love it. If you wanna find things, maybe you'll have better luck reselling them. Maybe you're on eBay and can take it and sell it there or something. So that's that. Then the relist award this week. So this is going to an item that has been relisted one to multiple times and finally sold after being relisted. And this skirt, it's a See You Monday tie waist skirt. I thought it was so cute. I got it at the bins and it looked really cute in person. It looked really cute in the pictures. Someone I thought would surely love this skirt and it got relisted and it got relisted and I think it got relisted three times. Now my records show at this point in time 
that it was 188 days old, but I feel like it's older than that. And the problem is when I had my VA, I never really directed her on certain things. I just, even though I'm a very detail oriented person, it's only when I'm actually doing the work. So when she was doing the work, sometimes she would just do it however she saw fit and it got the job done. And I never noticed that there were like latent effects. And so one of them was when she would relist, sometimes she would redo the date and sometimes she wouldn't. And so some items show up as old, old, and then they got relisted, but the old date is still there. And then some items show up as newer, even though they were older because she changed the date when she relisted it in the spreadsheet. And that is what is tracking all of this information. So unfortunately it feels like it's a lot older than 188 days. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but I know it got relisted at least twice. And recently I relisted it and it sold. It sold for $11 and that's fine because clearly it wasn't a thing. Like I take a lot of risks. I'm not necessarily a person that looks up every single comp at the bins, at the thrift store. Sometimes I order items in bulk and they just come to me. And so I'm not in charge of choosing every single item. And when that happens, when that is part of your sourcing strategy, because I don't have the time to spend on lots of direct specific sourcing and items just come in, you have to make the most of what you get. And so either you're gonna sell it or you're gonna get rid of it, but I'd rather try to sell it even if it's for a lower amount. So in this case, I picked this item, but I didn't know if it was gonna be a thing or not because I didn't do the research. Now, I do see the value in that now. I will probably be doing that more now at my stage in the game. But earlier on, I just picked up whatever to see if it would work. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but then you do have to realize that you have to deal with the consequences of doing that later, which is getting rid of items that don't sell figuring out a way to clearance things out, all of that. So the Realist Award goes to the See You Monday skirt. Glad you got a new home. Glad the person got a great deal. Glad you are out of my closet. Next up is the award. And this is for an item where it's like, you're not sure if it's going to work out. We already talked about it. It is the Calvin Klein vintage shorts. It's one of those things where it's like, I picked it up thinking maybe it's a thing. I wasn't sure if it was going to be a thing. And honestly, I don't really think it is a thing for me, but it's still sold for $18. I still made a decent amount of profit. It was still worth it. I probably wouldn't do it again, but it was worth it. And so I'm just whew, glad that those sold. Glad I made a profit. Glad I'm done with that item. So that's the whew, award. I've got two more awards. The makeover award this week is for an item that I revised it and then it sold. Glorious. So basically, a while back I was getting airport lost luggage and that was items that I bid on in an auction sight unseen all from airport lost luggage. I have a whole playlist on all of those videos. If you want to check it out, I vlogged it. It was a lot of fun. It was really cool. I don't know if I'll do it as much now that the newness has worn off. Um, and given everything that's going on, I don't know if I want these airport clothes right now, but I did find some really great stuff in there. I also found and had to sift through lots of crap and that was kind of time consuming and a little bit exhausting. But I did get these shorts and these are Maui stonewash jean shorts in dark wash size 46. They are like a Brazilian brand as far as I know. And obviously I'm in Orlando. We get a lot of South American visitors and travelers and travelers from all over the world. And obviously not right now, but we did and we will again. And so a lot of Brazilian brands would get into these airport lost luggage. Last week I had one that was like these studded rhinestone denim shorts. So these were equivalent to a size, I think 14. But when I listed them, I listed them as is as the 46, just to see what would happen. Like if somebody is looking for that particular style or that particular size or that particular brand, they know what they're looking for. They know it's that size. And because they didn't sell, I then changed it to the equivalent size and they sold. So I think that's just a lesson in it's worth to make revisions on items that haven't sold. I also think it's worth reviewing items, even if you don't have any revisions as a result to make. So, you know, you could go through your whole entire closet and be like, oh, I listed everything perfectly. There's nothing to revise. They just need to sell. And if that's the case, great. For me, there's always mistakes to catch. Sometimes I have people comment on my listings and tell me, hey, the picture says it's a size eight, but it's listed as a size 10. I'm like, oh my God, mistake. And I fix it. Um, and now it's in the right size category. Like there's just mistakes that happen, whether they were mistakes that I made or mistakes that my virtual assistant made when I had her or just a communications error. Um, it could be anything, but there could be mistakes 
hidden in your listings, in your closet that are preventing your items from selling. So if you're not in the habit of going through, checking these listings, seeing what's not selling, trying to identify why you're never going to be able to get it sold. Um, so I do think it's worth the exercise of going back through listings and seeing what the heck you can do to make that item sell. And in this case, changing the size to the equivalent size was the thing that did it. And the makeover award goes to that pair of shorts. The last award I have for you today is the Holy Crap Award. And oh God, I just, it stuns me. It just baffles me, this ASOS size 14 phenomenon. Like, tell me in the comments below, have you had this? Did you know about this? Is it just because it's a plus size? Like, it's borderline plus size. I don't know. I just, the Holy Crap Award goes to the Tropical ASOS size 14 dress that sold in two days for $25. You may not think anything of it, but I am just on cloud nine over this ASOS size 14 business. I mean, I've now sold five, six, seven, eight, I don't even know, ASOS size 14 dresses, all selling for over $20, all selling in less than a week of being listed. Like, what the heck? So if you see an ASOS size 14 dress, buy it and send it to me. No, I'm just kidding. Buy it and sell it. <laughs> um, I hope that that could help you in the future. Like, let's, let's capitalize on all the women looking for ASOS size 14 dresses. Anyway, guys, that is everything I have for you. This video, I am looking at the thing right now. It took me 58 minutes to record due to my tech issues, due to my insanity, due to all of the things. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great, relaxing, family-oriented Memorial Day weekend. Don't do too much work. Do a little, but don't do too much. And I will see you next week um, and throughout the week with more videos. I do another video on Wednesday. And when I have a bonus one, those go up on Friday and then always on Sunday, a what's sold. So thanks so much. I hope you have a great week. Hope you have lots of sales and I'll see you next time. Bye. My battery ran out, so I'm sitting here just waiting for it to come on again. La 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 la.